Well, it looks like I'm live. Hopefully this is working. Um, give it a few minutes here for people to join in. I have no idea how how to do this because it's my first time. So we'll just uh, we'll hang out, we'll wait a little bit, and we'll see what happens. Um, there's all these little buttons down at the bottom. I wonder what I can do with them. I can write a comment. Oh, look at that. Awesome. So this is my first one, my very first Facebook Live. So here we are. Just keep waiting a little bit to see who's going to come in. I'm going to walk around out here a little bit, let you guys who want to see, see what the shed of strength actually looks like from a distance. It's basically junk from Sanford and Son is what it looks like. But we're out here in College Grove. Everything is wonderful. And this is my view. I absolutely love it here. So, my sister, Elisa, hello. Can you hear me okay? I got a thumbs up on that, so that's good. We are apparently live. So, I don't know how many people are going to tune in. It's the first one. A very short notice that I told everybody, but um, I have a few things that I want to talk about, and so here we are. We're going to talk about them. Um, first of all, if you are watching, either live or um, watching the recording of this. I appreciate you coming on here. Thanks for spending some time with me here in the shed and uh, hopefully you get something out of it. I have been encouraged by mentors of mine to start publishing live stuff so I'm going to commit to doing that on a daily basis when I can for the next little while and we'll see how it goes. Um, stuff to talk about today. If anyone has any questions, please just type them into the comment section and I will answer them. If you know who I am or if you know anything about me, then you probably are familiar with the things that I know about and hopefully the things that I don't know about. So if you want to ask me questions about, I don't know, knitting socks, you're in the wrong place. If you want to ask me questions about getting stronger, if you want to ask me questions about body transformation, if you want to ask me questions about feats of strength, if you want to ask me questions about mindset, um, stuff about you know, Neville Goddard or any of that kind of stuff, um, please, by all means, type them in. Um, Catherine Daigle. Hi, Cassie. Thank you for watching. Um, my very first one. And here we are. So what I wanted to talk about as a subject today is um, how my life has changed in the past couple of years um, in a number of ways. Um, first of all, about two years ago, it was I think April 17th of 2017, I decided to uh, go full blown, full bore, however the hell you want to say it, into the ketogenic diet. And I thoroughly, thoroughly loved it. I have thoroughly enjoyed it. I still eat a low carb lifestyle to this day. Um, within the first few months of switching my diet around and um, being 100% committed to that and not taking cheat days, not taking off days, not doing things like having the occasional beer to drink because I did love me some beer. Um, I dropped, uh, how much on the scale? Close to 60 pounds on the scale. So that was awesome. Um, able to maintain it. I was doing some fairly serious training at the time too with feats of strength, barbells, kettlebells, all the kind of stuff that I'm already into. Oh, it's my cousin Jamie. Hi, Jamie. Um, thank you for joining. Um, and then the most wonderful thing ever happened. Um, we had a baby. My wife Mandy and I had a baby, little baby Liam, um, who we put some photos up not too long ago of him and me in a kilt and basically broke the internet, so that was cool. Um, but it's he's almost six months old. He's like five and a half months old now, and um, anyone who's a parent knows that bringing a child into your house, bringing another person who is completely dependent on you disrupts everything and you have to accommodate that. There's no um, um, getting around the fact that you have to accommodate that. Eric, what's up? 
Fellas, what's up? How you guys doing? Um, Dan, what's up? Balaz, am I pronouncing your name right? If I am, give me a thumbs up. If I'm not, then spell it out phonetically for me, please. Um, so, we brought him home. Everything's wonderful, everything's great. Um, but everything got disrupted. Um, a few months ago, back in, it was before Liam was born, so I think it was in the beginning of August of last year, I decided that I no longer wanted to run a gym. So I closed down my uh, Cool Springs location and I've been exclusively doing speaking and performing as a strong man and coaching people online. Um, if you have questions about either of those things, um, then please send me a private message and we will uh, discuss those things. What's up, Eric? Good to see you. Thanks for shouting out and for being a part of this for my very first live. So Liam got here and we brought him home. Everything got disrupted. For a while there was, you know, you sleep when you can and you eat what you can and you train if you can. Um, now, obviously, with me being a performing strongman, part of my livelihood is staying strong and uh, being able to do the feats of strength. So there's certain things that are just, it's going to work for me. It's no different than answering emails that I, that I have to practice and have to work on and have to, to keep up to speed. Um, but some of my conditioning fell off the off the edge there. I wasn't doing the same, or I haven't been doing the same amount of uh, output that I've been doing as far as the amount of training and the, the conditioning aspect and all that sort of stuff. But I've been doing a lot of strength work. So I feel good about all that. And it's a fair trade. I know that with the the reduction in sleep, then I'm also gonna need more, more recovery and that kind of stuff. But time becomes a big issue. And um, so I started thinking a couple of weeks ago um, how I've put on a little bit of weight because of the, of the lack of sleep and uh, just because of the lack of training time and, and not tracking my food and all that sort of stuff. And that's, that's fine. I'm not upset about that at all. But um, now it's turning spring. He's becoming a little more autonomous. Um, scheduling things are working better. So I'm going to, uh, to commit for the next four weeks at least to doing some things to kind of get back in that condition that I was in and keep the same strength, if not improve some strength. Um, so I got to thinking about that and I do not want to go down a path that I've already traveled in any sort of conditioning or any sort of strength thing like that. So um, I don't really want to do thousands and thousands of swings right now, um, which is amazing and it works. And, and I love it, but I've done that several times and don't want to do that. Um, I train here. You can see there is no wall behind me. I have three walls around me. Um, and that was part of part of uh, what was going on over the winter too, is it got a little bit chilly. And so, uh, not that I mind the cold at all, I don't. Um, but coming out here and grabbing a kettlebell or a barbell or a dumbbell that's been sitting around in very cold temperatures, you have to wear gloves or it can actually damage your hands. If you don't believe me, um, I don't recommend that you try it. So um, now that it's warming up, that's not an issue anymore. So what I decided to do is um, I want to get in better shape than what I am now. Um, I want to harden up a little bit and that's important to me because it's just part of what I do. But I also want to model for Liam the behavior that no matter what kind of disruptive schedule thing you might have going on, no matter what's happening in your life, if you want to accomplish something, you have to schedule the time to do it, you have to have a plan to do it, and you have to actually execute that plan. And so um, I know that he's, he's not picking up on all the details of that at this young age yet, but it's... Uh, <laughs> cool breeze up the kill. Absolutely. That's the truth. Um, absolutely. Um, made me lose, lose my train of thought. Um, where was I? Oh yeah. Uh, I want to model that behavior for him because I want him to know, I want him to see, not just know, but I want him to see, um, the example of me setting a goal and carrying out the action steps to, to doing that. So, um, where I kind of, 
run into trouble with that is figuring out how to schedule it, having enough time to do it, and being able to do it with um, um, a fairly limited amount of equipment that I have here. Um, I mean, I have, I have quite a, quite a bit of stuff because most of the stuff that I that I have here uh, is left over from when I had a gym. So um, what I decided to do was just kind of set um, set some parameters for myself and just see how it goes. And I, I literally thought of this just recently, just like in the past couple of days, and decided that. Uh, that I would share it live with everybody. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a single dumbbell. I have this guy right here. It weighs 65 pounds. I have a pair of them, but I, I decided to make it even, even more cut and dried in parameters. I'm gonna take a single dumbbell and I'm gonna use it for every session for the next four weeks and see what happens. Um, I'm going to um, document what I'm doing. I'm going to um, see how creative I can get with that and also keep it as simple as I possibly can too because if anybody else wants to try it out, I want them to be able to do it. And at the end of this, then, uh, then maybe I'll make it available to, to everyone when we, when we find out what kind of, uh, what kind of actual results we're able to get out of it. So that's the epiphany that I had is I want to, I want to be able to do this. I'm still going to be practicing, um, bending and ripping and, and breaking coconuts and, and all the stuff that goes along with that. But that stuff is not very conditioning intensive. This is going to be more of a conditioning and, um, sustained strength to borrow a term from Marty Gallagher kind of thing. So I'm going to take one dumbbell. I'm going to do all manner of things with it and, um, see what I can accomplish with that. I will be going live talking about this on Facebook multiple times. Um, like I said, I uh, was encouraged to publish regular content by one of my business coaches, so that's what I'm doing. And um, I don't really want to do that, <laughs> to, to be honest. I was encouraged to do the publishing, and I'm like, yeah, sure, I love making videos and all that, but usually when I make a video, it's a YouTube thing, and I can go do something go back and watch the video. If I don't like what happened on the video, I can just delete it and it's like it never happened. I don't have to post it to uh, to uh, YouTube. Uh, Victoria and John McGraw, how's it going from South Africa? Good to see you here. Thank you for coming. So um, that's a bit of a, bit of a disconnect for me that, that I don't want to publish live. But if I say that I'm gonna do it, publicly like I am right now, now I'm pretty well committed to it or I wind up looking like a chump. Uh, the other thing is um, I don't really want to do the training, <laughs> to be honest. Um, I, I enjoy doing the feats of strength. Um, I'm in a place in my life right now where um, the conditioning type stuff is not really that appealing to me, but I need it. I need to focus on it for a few weeks. I need to feel the way that I feel when I've done that. I need to, what are we saying here, Dan? How do you do that? The first one you do, you look very comfortable. Look forward to the results. Facebook Live gets easier every time you do it. The first one, you look very comfortable. Are you saying that I look comfortable on this one now? Um, Attila, hello, brother. How are you? Good to see you. Um, if you're saying that I look comfortable doing this one now, then sure, I I feel very comfortable talking to a camera. Um, it's not that it's difficult to to do. It's uh, thanks, Dan. Yeah, thanks for clarifying. It's not that it's difficult for me to do. I, I feel rather comfortable doing this. Um, the difficulty lies in the consistency, which is it parallels the training, right? Anybody can go and bust their butt for two or three sessions in the gym for a couple of weeks. Um, in the gym and then fall off and and you know then it's six months and it's and they haven't done anything uh that same issue is what i'm i'm bumping up against with doing the facebook live so so i um i'm committing to doing facebook live every day um or as often as my coach recommends how about that um but probably going to be every day i think for me it's going to be easier to do it every single day because like I talked about when we with the ketogenic diet stuff with the people in the, in the keto switch group that we did a couple years ago um, 
100% compliance is easier for me than 90% compliance or even 99% compliance. Because I find with my personality type that if I commit to it and say these are the parameters in which I'm existing, then I'm able to thrive in that. But if I don't commit to that, if I say, okay, I'm going to, to take some time off here or there, whatever, um, I wind up not doing as well with it. I hope that makes sense. So anyway, I'm inviting everyone along with me and um, we're gonna do one dumbbell. We're gonna do multitude of movements. Um, that'll be part of what we're doing here. That's right, John, all or nothing. Um, and I'm gonna be talking about other stuff. I'll, I'm certain that I'll be doing some feats of strength. I'm certain that I'll be talking about whatever happens to be on my mind on any given day because I'm not gonna train every single day. Oh, that was the other thing that I wanted um, parameter to set. I want this particular training with um, the one dumbbell to take less than two hours total time per week. So that means if I'm doing four days a week, each session's 30 minutes or less. Um, and I'll talk about my nutrition as I go along too. Um, and probably, probably later today or tomorrow, I'll do some kind of photo or something like that to show, you know, physically where I am right now. Um, but uh, the lighting out here in the shed is not really conducive to that. So I want to be able to have control of the lighting so that um, if I have crappy lighting in the, in the first photo and then good lighting in the end, then my experience has been as an amazing 12 coach that people are like, oh, that's all in the lighting. Yeah, so I want to replicate the same conditions. Um, I did that with the keto switch stuff last or two years ago and it worked out very well that way. So I'll just, uh, I'll go from there. So anybody got any questions for me? For anything not just this one dumbbell thing but anything at all that uh, I am knowledgeable in you may even see a coconut get broken here every once in a while this here is my uh, my sandbag that I train the coconut hand on very high-tech stuff the bunch of concrete blocks and a canvas bag full of sand so anybody got any questions if not, I'm gonna sign off here shortly because, like I said, it's my first one. Why only 30 minutes, John asks, John McGraw asks. Um, I want to, um, A, have enough time to consistently get everything done. I know that since the baby got here, schedule, scheduling time has been scattered all over the place, and um, my thought was, what's the bare minimum of amount of effective time that I can um, commit to this and I thought if I can do half an hour four days a week then um, I know that I can do that um, but then the more I thought about it the more I thought I want to set up the parameters so that that's all I'm doing for conditioning and for um, the dumbbell work um, I'll still be doing various feats of strength practice um, because you know that's my job uh, bending nails and practicing speaking and all that. And uh, another thing, uh, John, you uh, being a, a fellow performing strongman, you'll appreciate this. Um, we talk about it, uh, Dennis, is, Dennis Rogers has talked about this multiple, multiple times, that it's important to be able to continue to talk even if your heart rate is up and you're breathing hard. So part of what I'm gonna be doing while I'm doing this um, is getting myself into the kind of condition that will allow me to have a heart rate of 140, 150 beats a minute at a guy who's almost 50 years old and still be able to carry on the same level of conversation that, um, that I'm able to have with you right now on this Facebook Live. Because as my fellow performing strongman friends know, if you've ever had to do feats in the context of a talk, the talk is the important part. And you lose your audience immediately if you do a feat that's incredibly difficult and then you spend the next few minutes <sighs> trying to recover from it. It loses all the momentum. So um, that's one reason. Um, just timing around taking care of the baby is another reason. Um, I am working actively at growing various aspects of my business and that is a time commitment. Um, I want to spend time with my family. Um, so it's just, it's for no other reason than that, John. I, I thought, uh, 
you know, 30 minute sessions four times a week, um, or maybe even three times a week. I don't know. We'll see how it goes out. Um, any other questions for me? Eric says, sustain strength. Yes, absolutely. Great for mental strength as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, when you get into that, that place that sustained strength training can take you mentally, um, it's a special place that you have to experience for yourself. So, um, any other questions for me today? And if you don't have questions for me, then that's fine too. If you think of anything that you want me to talk about besides this one dumbbell business, then um, by all means, either uh, post it in the comments or post it on the page or send me a message or write me a letter or send me a carrier pigeon or whatever, you know. Um, I'll do what I can to answer it. If I know the answer, I'll answer it honestly and authentically. And if I don't know, then I will say, I do not know. Um, Anybody got anything else for me today? And it doesn't look like there's... All right, well, thank you all very much for being a part of my very first ever Facebook Live. And um, we'll see you soon.